Data, big data, data science, data is everywhere, but how do we display data using HTML? I'll give you the answer today on this episode of Framework Digital. After watching this video, you'll know how to display data with HTML using tables. Tables are a simple but important HTML tool used to display data in rows and columns, much as you would on a spreadsheet. Whether you code your HTML code directly or you use a web development authoring tool, this video will help you better understand how to display your tabular data on the web. My name is Mark Lassoff. Welcome to Framework Digital. I've been teaching coding and digital design for over 20 years. Over the past decade, almost 2 million people have taken my courses on development and digital design. Before our tutorial on HTML tables, I'd encourage you to hit that subscribe button. We produce several videos each week, helping digital creators produce everything from apps to videos. Don't forget to hit the bell so you're alerted when new videos are released. I've already created a basic document structure in HTML version 5. We have our doc type declaration on line 1. On line 2 and on line 13, we have our opening and closing HTML tags. And then we have our head and body sections of the HTML document. Our table tags will go inside the body. All tables are enclosed in an opening and closing table tag. On line 12, where our cursor is flashing, we'll be placing the content for our table. Tables, of course, are designed to hold data that's in rows and columns. For this table, we're going to be creating a train schedule. It's going to have four columns and a number of rows. So let's start by defining the first row. Each row is defined by a table row tag. All of the content in that row is going to be enclosed in this tag. We'll start the actual data for this first row on line 13. Since this row is going to include the headers for our table, we're going to enclose the data in table header tags. The table header tag is TH. Our first header is going to be origin. Our next header is going to be destination. We're then going to have a header for departure time. And finally, arrival time. All of these headers are going to appear in a single row. Our second row will include our first train scheduled. Since these aren't headers but actual data, we'll use the table data tag. Our origin is Westport, Connecticut. Our destination is Grand Central Station. The first train will list departs at 8.03 a.m. and arrives in Grand Central Station at 9.24 a.m. So we have our first row of data, which will appear underneath our table headers. Let's take a look at the result in the browser. And in the browser, you can see our table headers, origin, destination, departure time, and arrival time, and then our first row of data. Our origin is Westport, Connecticut, destination, Grand Central Station, departing at 8.03 and arriving at 9.24. I'm going to fill in a number of additional rows of table data, and then we'll again look at the result in the browser. And now you can see a more complete table with additional data. The problem with our table so far is it's not very attractive and not very readable. We can make some adjustments using CSS to improve upon our table. Let's go to the code. 
I'm going to add a style element so we can add CSS to this particular table. Everything between our opening and closing style element will be CSS code, not HTML. Now we can create CSS rules that affect the entire table, individual table rows, or even individual table header and table data cells. The first rules that I want to create affect both the table header and table data cells. So I'll use a selector, th, comma, td. This will select all of the table header and table data cells and apply the CSS rules that I write. First, I'm going to add some padding. This will put 10 pixels of padding between each cell wall and the cell content. Let's take a look at the results in the browser. And here you can see our table is much more spaced out and easier to read. We can also apply background colors to cells in order to make them more visually attractive. Let's make a selector for our table header cells and use the background color rule to set the color to EE0034. That's the HTML color definition for the color used for the Metro North train line. We can save and see our result in the browser. When I click refresh, the background color is applied. I think our table header cells would look better with white text. So let's set that color rule as well. Since we're applying this to table header cells, I don't need to create a different selector. I can put the additional rule right here. Color will style our text and we can just use white. Again, let's take a look at the result in the browser. I think that looks pretty good. I would like to give our actual data cells a little bit of background color as well. This time we'll use the TD selector to select all our table data cells. And again, the background color rule, and I'm going to create a slight gray. Let's save and take a look at the result. And now you can see our table data cells have a very slight gray tint to them. They do stand out more from the background now, so I'm pretty happy with this result. One more thing I'd like to do is change the typeface that we're using for the entire table. Since this applies to the entire table, I'll use the table selector and the font family rule. I'm going to select Arial as my first choice and then Helvetica or sans serif if the user has none of these. And chances are they do. We'll save and look at the results. I'm really liking how this is starting to look. I think next I'd like to add some visible borders between the individual cells. So I'll use the table header table data selector and the border rule. We'll just do a one pixel solid black border. I'm gonna go ahead and save and let's take a look at the result. And you can see we've got a border around each individual cell. This isn't exactly what I had in mind. The double border looks a little bit weird to me. So I'm going to add the border collapse rule. I'm going to add the border collapse rule to the table itself. The rule is border collapse with a setting of collapse. Let's save and take a look at the result in our browser. When I click refresh, you'll see the border collapse rule applied. That looks much better. Now that we've got our table looking better, I'd like to introduce you to three semantic tags that can be very useful in constructing more complex tables. These semantic tags allow us to mark the header of the table, the body of the table, and the footer of the table if we have one. So I'm going to mark our table header with the T head tag. Of course, this will close at the end of our header which is right after our first row. Our body is where we have all of our schedule information. We'll use the T body tag to mark that off. And that would close right here. And if we had a footer in our table, we could use the T foot tag to mark that off. I can add another row to be our footer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a single table data and I'm going to span four columns like that. This will make this particular table data cell four columns wide. And we'll put the text Metro North Commuter Railroad. 
Now, except for adding the footer, there'll actually be no visual result in our table. Let's take a look. And you can see the footer's been added, but the T head and T body tags actually had no visual results. One thing they do allow us to do is isolate those sections of the table for formatting using CSS. For example, let's use the T foot selector and let's add a couple of rules. First of all, we'll center the text. And secondly, we'll use bold text. Again, when I click refresh, we'll see the T foot selector rules applied. I think we can just about wrap up our table, but I would be remiss if I didn't show you one more tag related to HTML tables, and that's the caption tag. The caption tag provides a caption for the table, obviously. So let's go ahead and add train schedule, Westport to Grand Central. The idea is to describe the entire table. We'll refresh, and you can see the caption appears above the table. For people using an assistive device to consume the website, the caption will tell them whether or not it's important to consume the rest of the data in the table or to just ignore it. Thank you so much for watching this HTML tables tutorial. If you enjoyed the tutorial, would you mind clicking the like button? Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so that you can be notified whenever we post new videos. If you'd like the code from this episode, you can download it at the address below. I've put that link in the notes below the video as well. I'm Mark Lassoff for Framework Digital. Please visit our website at frameworktv.com and sign up for free training for digital creators. When you sign up, I'll send you free courses, workshops, and projects to help you develop your digital design skills. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.